Okay, as mentioned just before, the idea with the query editor is to clean up and transform your data from its rawest form, okay? And we can do simple things, we can do advanced things. What we'll focus on here is just some simple cleanup things that you want to do consistently to make your data more optimized, okay, for, for, for Power BI. Now, the very first thing that I always do when I come in here, so, you know, these steps that I'm going through, they're exactly what I do. There's nothing different um, than what I've done for many, many, you know, almost well over a hundreds, hundreds probably of, of, of models that I've built over time. I go through exactly the same things, okay? And I, the first thing I always do is I want to I want to clean up the names of my data, okay? I want to clean them up. And even just simple things like, no, you know, I want proper names. I don't want underscores. I don't want abbreviations. I want names that are so logical that anyone could understand what is in that particular table or in that particular column, okay? So what I would do is I would say click on a table and you see here it's customer underscore data. You can actually double click here to actually change the name or you can come over to this properties area and you can say change it to customers. I'll just change it to that, okay? I would then also come over here and I'll change this to locations. I'm just double clicking on, on that particular location and here I'm going products, okay? I'm not gonna change these just yet because we wanna, we are actually gonna do something to those particular tables. Um, very very soon okay so that's the first thing I would do then what I would do is I would come into the particular tables and I would work across here the column names and make sure all the column names make uh, make sense okay and you'll see here that a lot of them actually do um, for these indexes I'm not too worried because these are literally just sort of linking columns but say you know the reason why you know big reason why this is is because say this product here right this product name well we might use this particular column inside of a visualization and visualization titles are, are automatically created based on the names of columns and so if you have some sort of abbreviation here you'll have you know um, visualizations which don't make sense to anybody they won't know what it is and so that's why setting things up well here is really really important okay so you know i could um i could change say this i could i could just double click in this particular column and instead of cost i could change it to product cost i just want to make it so obvious what each of these things um actually are right okay so i, I would come across here you know really really simple stuff a lot of this is actually you know already um, um set up for you i don't want to have to do too much of this stuff because you know once i explain it to you I ho hopefully hopefully you sort of get it okay the next thing that i want to do and i would always do is i need to I need to I need to clean up my data like this particular table for example this locations table it's got data that I I don't actually want I don't actually need okay and if you don't need particular columns or data in your in your particular tables you want to get rid of them you don't want to have excess information that you just don't need okay and so the information that I don't really want in this particular table is from area code so I'm going to select the area code column and I'm gonna come. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna leave population actually, but I'm going to then hold down Control and select this column, this column, this column, this column, and this time zone column. I'm gonna select all of those, and I'm just. I'm just holding down the Control key. You can hold down Shift if you want to do everything in order, but I just held down the Control as I was cl clicking those, and then I can go right click, remove columns. Okay, now when I do this, when I select remove columns, or when you do it, I want you to have a look over here into the applied steps. Okay, so remove columns, and you'll see here that that applied step section has now grown. I've achieved what I wanted to, I deleted that particular, those particular columns, and what happened? My transformation was recorded, and this is the whole thing about the query editor, right? It records what you do one after the other in a sequential way and once you have it set up all perfectly as you want it every time you go and refresh the data now those transformations will all happen automatically you don't have to do this again you only have to do this once okay you only have to do all of these transformations and get them set up in the right order once okay it's easy though it's really easy though to play around with your transformations in the query editor okay 
So you'll see here that in this applied steps area, this is you'll work in this a lot, you can um, go back and forth between your um, transformations. So say for instance I did that transformation and I didn't like it. Okay, I realized oh I made a mistake. Well, I can click the X and then my query, because you've got to remember this is a query, my query will go back to its previous state. Okay. And then what I can do is I can say uh, reselect them. I can just hold down the control key again and select them like this. And go remove columns and it will come back. Okay, so you can really have a play around here and it doesn't, there's nothing, you're not going to break anything. Okay, you're going to, um, you know, to become familiar with this area, I highly recommend just having a play around with all the different things you can do. Have a look through the ribbon. Do some right clicks and see what see what changes you can make. Um, you know the, the variety of different changes that you can make. Okay, and we'll make a few more. We'll, we will make a few more. That's just some really simple stuff just to get us going. And but it's also the simple stuff that I would always start on. You know, just get some quick wins on the board with your with your data cleanup. And those are some some really good ones to do. Now the next thing that we need to do is we need to. You see here that we've got these three tables right but they've all basically got exactly the same information okay they've basically got the same information you'll see here that these dates are actually this is the, the these dates haven't updated um sorry for um for the new dates and the actual tabs but it's okay it's okay we're gonna don't don't worry i, I know that's a bit of an oversight but don't worry about that um we will we will we will be changing it up very very soon and we can we could also you know we could also come in here if we really wanted to we could come in here and go 2018 we could fix it up here so there's always a way to fix it up if you want but i would honestly probably change it at the excel level if if i was you if you know if this was real data but um what i'm going to do is we're going to we're going to append these together because the thing is is that the data structure is exactly the same this is the same data basically it's just different time frames right and what we need to do is we there's no we don't want three different tables ultimately currently these are three different queries we we don't want three different tables in our data model once we actually commit this okay so what we need to do is we need to append these we need to bang them one on top of the other okay and so the way we can do that is really not too difficult we can um, <coughs> select one of uh, these tables and I can hold down control and select another one then we can find the append uh, transformation which is up the top here um, I think we've got we've got to go across to the home ribbon and if we go oh here we go append queries so it's in the home ribbon and we go append queries so we can click on that and so we've got concatenate rows from two tables into a single table okay and we can actually in this we can actually go three or more tables and so I've got tables to append 2019 and I also want to append um, we'll add that one and we'll add that one as well um, and we'll move this one a bit Oh, it's because I'm selected on that. Hold on. What I'll do is I'll start again. We'll start again. We'll just we'll just select the sales 2020. Um, actually, sales 2018. We'll select we'll select one. We'll go append queries, three or more tables, and then we'll select these across like this. So a really handy pop up box. So that, that this is actually much quicker than it was historically um, to, to to do this particular transformation. So they made some good updates as they as they are with um, everything across Power BI. And then I can just go OK like this. OK, and so you'll see here appended query in the applied steps. And if we if we go down a bit and we just have a look at this particular column here, might take a little while actually because it's like 4,000 rows. But basically what we would find is if we put these in order, so what we can do is we can right click here and uh, we can... Um, sort ascending sorry the drop down we can go sort descending right you'll see that we now have the 2020 we're still selected on this particular 2018 we have the 2020 dates in that particular table how good is that right and so then what we can do is we this is going to be our master sales table right so I'm going to change the name to sales and then what I'm going to do is we, we need to because at the moment this is still a query right and we still need it 
But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on this particular table and then what you'll find is we can disable. So currently the enable load is ticked. What we can do is we can disable that load. Okay. Because what we want to happen, if you think about it, let's think about the workflow here. We do want to include this particular table in a refresh of the report. Like if we refresh the report, we still want the data. But past, post this query part, we don't want the data to be imported into our model because we've summarized it all in this one table that we're calling sales now. Okay. And this is uh, really important to do if you're having to deal with this sort of thing. We are having to do some sort of append or merging of two particular tables together. If you have that table, if you, you know, and you want to be doing, you want to be summarizing things as much as you can. You don't want any sort of, um, you know, dead weight in your model. You want your op model to be optimized. Your your ta the tables in your model to be optimized as much as you possibly can. Okay, so that's a few transformations that you can do there. Um, let's. Let's just work up a, a, a few more. Let's see if we can do a, a few more, or, we'll, or at least talk through a few more, okay? And I'm going to also show you how you can organize this in a second to make it make it a lot a um, lot easier to um, manage in the future. But what else can we do? One, what else we, should we check, you know, in the query editor? One thing we should always check is these uh, the data types that each different column is, okay? And so I would say that Power BI is very good at guessing what a data type for a column is, okay? And they've, they're represented by these um, icons at the top of every column. You can very easily change it though, if for example, it's wrong, which is very, very rare. Um, but so you can very easily click on that and change it to whatever type here. But it is very, very important that you get the correct data types before you move into Power BI. One thing that I see happen all the time is that a numeric column might come through as a text column and you, and you don't notice it, okay? And then what, um, what happens is you try and sum up that column ultimately inside of Power BI and then it doesn't work and you're wondering why and you're, you know, you're playing around for, for hours trying to work it out, but it could be very as simple as making sure that it's a numbered column rather than a text column, okay? Let's just have a look at some of these other ones. See, some of these are these are all pretty optimized. I haven't haven't made it too difficult for us. But what if we just talk through a few other things here? Let's have a look. Say, for example, we wanted to create a different reference for California, for example, that wasn't, or a different short code for California that didn't exist before. Okay, what we can do is we can do lots. I mean, we can do lots of things to um, f to um, to generate something, but let's work through a few sort of interesting steps that I think you'll you'll enjoy learning about and can you'll you'll be able to see the potential. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this column. I'm going to right click and then I'm going to go duplicate column. Okay, so now I've done a simple duplication of that column, and then I'm going to right click again, and I'm going to go transform into say uppercase. So I've now transformed that particular column into uppercase. Then I'm going to I'm going to split the column. I'm going to right click. I'm going to find a split the column, and I'm going to say by number of characters. And then I'm going to say four. I'm going to say as once as far left as possible for the four characters. And so now I've got um, a short code of Kelly, all in capital letters. Then I've got this. Um, other column which has been split apart. Hopefully you're also recognizing all of these are becoming into the applied steps. Then I'm going to right click here and I'm going to remove this column. Then I'm going to come here and um, I'm going to go state short code. I'm going to change it like that. Okay. So this is a this is a pretty simple transformation but hopefully you're getting the idea of what you're doing here. Okay. We can also just, I can also bring this back over here if I really wanted to, I could change the order. We're, we're trying to clean up various different aspects of our data or even add to our data if we feel we need to by utilizing a lot of the great point and click features that they have in the query editor. And the other great thing about it is that everything is recorded here in this applied steps section. We can even click through the applied steps here to actually see what is actually going on. 
so or what we have done okay so i can you know we can see each different part by sort of clicking through like this okay and you'll see that the actual transformation there's a specific type of code called m code is actually um, appearing inside of this formula bar at the top here if you want to see all of it you jump into this advanced editor okay so you click on the advanced editor once if you're clicked on a table and you'll see all of this is being written automatically when you're actually creating um, these transformations as a beginner I just wouldn't be too worried about this area um, as you get a little bit more advanced it's a good idea to have a good understanding of it um, and then if you're getting super super advanced like really really advanced then you probably want to understand how to write it but that is in my personal opinion quite rare you don't you the best the you know you want to get to a point where you understand what's going on here okay because nearly everything you can do can be done just with a point and click okay there are some really advanced scenarios that you might want to learn a little bit more about some simple you know coding of that area but in this particular um uh, course we're not going to go too too deep into that okay something to look into further and we obviously have more content uh, on that on uh, within our platform if you do want to eventually get there okay so this video has has gone on probably as about as long as i want um, but i hopefully i've given you a really good idea of how this works and what we're doing and why you should do it um, because it is absolutely essential okay right so let's round off and we'll move on to the next one